The first topic that we're going to cover is integers. Here's what you need to know about integers. Integers are going to be whole numbers, the numbers that you count with. Remember that integers do include negative numbers and zero. Many test questions are going to further limit the way that you think and use integers by adding other descriptor words, such as positive integers. If a test question says that you need to use a positive integer, you're going to be looking at integers that are greater than zero. So for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. A negative integer, similarly, are going to be integers less than zero. So for example, negative 1, negative 2. You may see a test question that asks you to consider even or odd integers. An even integer is divisible by 2. So for example, negative 4, negative 2, 0, and 2. Notice that that list included negative values. So you could be asked for an even integer that is negative. An odd integer is going to be those integers that are not divisible by 2. So for example, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 5, etc. Prime integers are going to be integers that are only divisible by 1 and itself. For example, 2, 3, 5, etc. Remember that prime integers do need to be greater than 1. Finally, remember that 0 is going to be the only non-negative, non-positive integer. So don't forget about 0 when you're doing questions that require you to look at integers. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. All right, if you're given the set of numbers, 3, negative 26, the square root of 2, 1 fourth, 0, and pi, which of those numbers are integers? We've got three integers in that list. 3, negative 26, and 0. Notice that we did have a negative integer and we did have a 0. Now, which of the numbers are positive? Okay, now we have a few more numbers. 3, square root of 2, 1 fourth, and pi. Notice that I didn't ask for positive integers, I asked for positive numbers. So we included the square root of 2, 1 fourth, and pi. Now, which of the numbers are odd? There's only going to be one number in this list that's odd, and that's the number 3. If you're dealing with a non-integer value, it's impossible to determine whether it's odd or even. Finally, which of this set of numbers is prime? Again, we only have one prime number, and that's the number 3. Let's look at a definition before we go to the exercises. You may see in your questions the term digits. What you want to think about with that word is that digits are describing the numbers that make up larger numbers. They're basically the math alphabet. So just as we group and order letters to form different words, we can also group and order different digits to form different numbers. So for example, the number 128 is made up of three digits, 1, 2, and 8. We could take those three digits and rearrange them to make a new number such as 281 or 812. Keep that definition in mind as you do the six integer exercises. I'll give you a couple of minutes to try those exercises out, and when you're finished, we'll go over the answers, and then we'll review a few of those questions together.
Okay, stop working. Now check your answers. Now that you've checked your answers, let's go through a couple of these examples together. The first one, number one, asks us which of the digits in the number 27,536 are even. Remember, because this question asks us about digits, we don't really need to concern ourselves with the number 27,536. Rather, we want to look at the individual numbers that make up that larger number. So we have five digits to consider, two, seven, five, three, and six. Out of those five digits, how many of them are even? Well, looking at that list, we only have two even numbers, two and six. So the answer to this question is just that, number two and number six. Now let's take a look at number three. This question asks us to arrange the following numbers in numerical order. 14, negative 23, zero, negative 30, and six. Remember that when we want to arrange a set of numbers in numerical order, we want to start with the smallest number first. Since we have negative numbers in this list, we want to deal with the negative number that has the largest absolute value. In this case, it would be negative 30. The next largest would be negative 23, then 0. And now that we've reached 0, we can go with our positive integers, 6 and then 14. Finally, let's take a look at number 6. This question asks us to identify the smallest prime number. Remember that prime numbers are numbers that are only divisible by one in itself, and prime numbers must be greater than one. So the smallest prime number is two. This is a very special prime number. You're gonna to wanna to remember it because it's the only even prime number. Now that we've gone through a couple of exercises, let's try a test question. Number seven asks us if three X plus 10 represents an odd integer, which of the following represents the next largest odd integer? Now, before we look at the answer choices, I want you to think about actual numbers. Let's say we're thinking about the number three. When you have three, how do you get to number five? What do you need to do to three in order to get to five, which is the largest, next largest odd integer? All you would need to do is add two. So, going back to our test question, if 3x plus 10 is an odd integer, all we need to do is add 2 to that expression in order to generate the next largest odd number. So, 3x plus 10 plus 2 is going to give us 3x plus 12. Notice when you look at the five answer choices, none of the five answer choices say 3x plus 12. This is because test makers like to change the format of the answer choices so that it doesn't match exactly what you may have written on your scratch paper. The good news is that all we need to do is factor, in this case, factor out a three, in order to make it look exactly like one of those answer choices. When you factor out a three, you get three on the outside of the parentheses times x plus four, which matches with answer choice C.